press A to select everything, and X to delete. Then in the X view, add in a reference image. In the image menu, reduce opacity to roughly 50%. Shift A to add in a cylinder. Press tab to go into edit mode. Press S to scale the cylinder to the desired diameter. Then, press G followed by Z to move the cylinder down in the Z direction. And press S followed by Z to scale the cylinder along the Z axis. Hold down Alt and select the top edge. Press E, then S to scale down the top edge. Next, press E to extrude the neck of the body. Now, with the edge still selected, hold down Ctrl and press B to bevel the edge. Repeat this process for all the edges. Alt select each edge, then Ctrl B to round it out. Tab out of edit mode, right click and select Shade Smooth. In the modifier menu, add in a solidify modifier. By selecting X ray view, the thickness can be seen. Adjust to give the bottle some thickness. Go out of X ray view and make sure to apply the modifier. Hold down Shift and press A to add in another cylinder. In the lower left of the screen, increase the vertices to 100. This will be important for adding in the ridges to the cap later on. Tab into edit mode, press S to scale down the cylinder to the size of the cap. Use G and Z to place the cap in the appropriate position, and S and Z to adjust its height. Alt select the top edge and scale it down to give the cap a taper. Use E to extrude the top edge, then S to scale it down. Now, add in edge loops. This will keep the lid from deforming too much when the ridges are added. Two near the bottom, and one on the top. Then go back to select mode, and change to X-ray view. In edge select mode, select all the middle edges of the cap. Then in the select menu, click check or deselect. Now, every other edge is selected. Press S to scale those edges down. Press A to select everything and Control B to bevel a little. This removes the sharp edges and makes it look more realistic. Tab out of edit mode, right click and select shade smooth. Shift A to add in a third cylinder. Tab into edit mode, use S, G, and Z to adjust its scale and position along the Z axis. Hold down Alt and select the top edge. Hold Ctrl and press B to round the top of the dropper. Then Alt select the bottom edge, scale it up, and bevel it slightly. Add in a loop cut, press S scale it down, and Ctrl B to bevel it to give the dropper its shape. Once happy, tab out of edit mode, right click and shade smooth. To create the label, select the bottle and tab into edit mode. In X-ray view, place a loop cut at the top and bottom of the label. Switch back to solid view, and go to face select mode. Select the faces that will be used for the label. With the faces selected, hold down shift and press D to duplicate the selection. Press escape to keep the new body from moving. Then press P and select Selection to create a new component for the label. Tab out of Edit Mode, and under the Modifier menu, add in a Solidify modifier to the label. This gives the label a nice thickness. Set the offset to a positive one. And make sure to apply the modifier. Now create the backdrop. Shift A and add in a plane. Tab into Edit Mode press S to scale it up, and G to drag it down to the base of the bottle. In edge select mode, select the back edge and extrude it upwards. Then select that back corner and bevel it to create a smooth backdrop. Scale the backdrop so that it is large enough to fill the frame. Tab out of edit mode, right click and select shade smooth. The modeling is now complete. Go into the shading window. The upper left window will not be used, so it can be nice to add in the reference image there while working. Select the dropper, and add in a new material. 
Adjust the base color to be black. To add fingerprint textures, connect a bump node to the normal. Then an image texture node connected to height. Load in a black and white fingerprint texture image. These can easily be found with a quick Google search, or through the link in the description. Adjust the strength so that it is less noticeable. Then connect a color ramp node between the roughness and image texture nodes. This will be used to adjust the roughness of the material and fingerprints. Play around with the slider and the strength of its colors. Once happy, select the cap and add in a new material. This will be very similar to the last. Connect a bump node to the normal, and an image texture with fingerprints or scratches to the height of the bump node. Then connect a color ramp node between the image texture and the roughness. Adjust the variables once more until satisfied. Select the bottle and add in a new material once more. This time, delete the principal BSDF and replace it with a glass BSDF. Adjust the color to be a light brown. Once lit properly, this will give the appearance of dark translucent glass as seen in the photo. Add in a color ramp followed by the fingerprint image once more to add detail to the texture. Adjust the sliders as necessary. Hold down control and click in the middle of the slider. This will add in a third tab to give more control when playing with the material. Select the label and add in a new material. This time, attach an image texture node to the base color. Load in an image of a label. The image will most likely not be lined up as desired. To fix this, go into the UV editing window. With the label selected, tab into edit mode. Press A to select the label. On the left side of the screen, scale the faces of the model to align with the image of the label. Use the G key to move the faces. Then press S and X to scale down the faces to better fit the image. Once it is well aligned, go back to the shading window. The label should be aligned properly now. To add more realism, connect a bump node to the normal, and connect the bump node to the label image. This will add dimension to the ink on the label. Reduce the strength till it looks appropriate. To make the ink glossy, connect a color ramp node between the roughness and label image. Adjust the sliders until the ink has a nice gloss while the rest of the label remains matte. Reduce the strength of this effect by lightening up the black slider. Select the backdrop and add in a new material to give it a soft paper look. Adjust the base color and increase the roughness. Then, connect a bump node to the normal and a Voronoi texture to the bump. Adjust the settings similar to mine to create the soft textured paper. There are endless possibilities when choosing a background texture, but I went with something soft and subtle. The reference image can now be hidden. Make sure to select the eye and the camera so that it cannot be seen in the viewport or in the final render. Back in the layout window, it is time to add in the camera. In the front view, shift A and add in the camera. Press G and then X to move it along the X axis. By clicking the camera icon, the viewport switches to the camera view. Under the camera menu, increase the focal length to roughly 200 millimeters. This adds to the professional look of the image. Then adjust the camera until the framing looks good. Switching to the rendered view, we see that lighting still must be added. Shift A to add in a sunlight. This will point it straight down so to add some shadows, rotate the sun to point at an angle. It creates a harsh shadow. To soften it, under the light menu, increase the angle to 10 degrees. Then increase the brightness. The light still feels a little harsh, so give it a warm hue. 
We will add two more area lights to fill out the space and give the product a more professional look. Shift A to add in the area light. Rotate it 90 degrees along the x-axis, then move it sideways along the y-axis. Scale it up and increase its power to 100 watts. Also adjust the hue of this light. Shift D to duplicate this light. Manipulate it to face diagonally downward from behind the bottle. Now the lighting is looking professional. In the world menu, reduce the strength to zero. This will avoid any other lighting from interfering with the lights we just created. In the render menu, switch the render engine to cycles. Then reduce the max samples to keep your computer happy. 200 works pretty well. In the upper left corner, click render and select render image. Now wait. Here are the final images I created. If you found this helpful, Click on the thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen and select subscribe. Thanks for watching. And as always, keep designing.